at you with your back turned to me. Speak to me. I'm ready, dude. <laughs> we are live. Why can I never time that swivel? Why? I don't know. I have such I a hard time know. timing that swivel. How you doing, Mike Zeno? I'm doing great, Scott Bosman. How are you? I'm doing well. And uh, I like your attire, Mike. I like your choice of attire. Yeah, right? Great wow. minds. Um, listen, how do we even come back from last week's episode? It's going to be very difficult to bounce back. I'm going to have to say. Uh, I think uh, last week was a lot of fun. It was. Um, we put ourselves out there. Yeah, we did. We were vulnerable. We were very vulnerable. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think we hit some good notes. And I think we may have hit a few mm, iffy notes. But hey. As long as the land geek community was having fun, <coughs> that's all that matters. Exactly. Exactly. You know, um, I think there is one way to kind of oh, to come back from that. We, we probably should have, uh, we should probably have, what if we, you know what we should do? We should bring a special guest on. That might be something we could do to kind of come back from not that. Just, not just any special guest, though, because... Who would you have in mind? There, there, I think there's only, you know, just a couple people who could maybe live up to the aura that Nightcap was, that the musical was. Right. And? Are we bringing them on already? Uh, well, I don't know. All right, you want to give a little, little uh, you want to tease the, tease the audience with a little... Uh... Well, let, let me let me say this to the audience first. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, Jeannie Engelmorm, she said she had a blast last week. She said some very nice things on Facebook today and this week. So we loved having you. Um, but for any for anyone that's watching tonight, feel free to drop us some questions uh, because not only will the wise uh, the wise and wizened Mike Zeno be answering your questions, uh, so will Scott Todd. Uh, is that it? Bring him up? Sure, let's bring him up. Here he is. We promised him and that we'd bring him back without an interpreter. Let's see if it works. <laughs> let's see if it works. Drum roll. There he is. Wait, don't even. Oh, I, gotta, I, I can't you hear you, though. Me. Can't. I can't I could, I oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes. So scared. I'm like, look at him. He's He's, he's, he's pulling a joke. He's acting like he can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you can't hear me? That's the same oh, one I pulled when Mark asked me for the tip of the week. In the round. Yes. Yeah. yes, and I bought it, too. I was like, wow, something's wrong. Mike, you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, we, we've been waiting to get back on here. This is, uh, you know, we had to do something to follow up from last week, so we figured... Uh, the best thing will be you. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm flattered, but uh, like, I got to tell you, you know, like I, uh, I've watched the, uh, the, the, the musical. I've watched it a few times. Uh, I enjoyed some of the songs. I wasn't quite sure, you know, you guys did like the Brady Bunch theme version. <laughs> oh, like, no, no, no. I'm, I was, I was slightly offended by that one because, you know, you had Mark and then, where Carol Brady would be, you went to me, and I'm like, man, are they saying like I'm the Carol Brady of the oh. land? Like, I don't know. Like, that's what you guys did. But you made a land moto song. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? Like, you know, like Scott said, there were some high notes, some good notes. Like, I will tell you that the end, the end was by far like Scott Bossman hitting Queen's song. Like, 
I, I want to come on tonight just just to, one to hear that one again. And two, oh, I thought no. about it's like Garth, like from Wayne's World, you know, like <laughs> have some licorice. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Well, uh, you know the reason. You know the reason the Brady Bunch, because you know when we do the pod, the, you see the squares. How do you, that, that? Yes. You know, uh, we'll redo it now. Oh, first. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm okay. I, I, I was just like, man, this is where Carol Brady would be, but now here I am. So you know, <laughs> Carol Brady, Brady was a beautiful Brady. woman. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take it. No problem. Oh, man. Do you, do you like my new sign? Scott, do you like my sign? I do like your sign. You know, it's funny because I just got done with uh, flight school today. Uh, we, we went from nine, nine o'clock Eastern. We always go nine o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it's supposed to go till 10. And I always blow through that. Like tonight we went, typically we go to like 1030. Sometimes it's content. Sometimes it's Q and A taking us there. But deal flow, tonight we're talking about sales in this flight school group, we're talking about sales. And really the thing is, Mike, like your sign right there is just so, so dead on because deal flow does in fact solve everything. When you have, when you have mailings coming back or going out and then them coming back, well then your anxiety about like, are, is anybody listening to me? It goes away. When right. you're marketing and you're connecting with the market and you're getting leads, then all of a sudden your anxiety can go down. And I mean, it's funny because I know that when one of those things is off in my business, well, then you feel it, right? Like it's, it's I always say that mailing and marketing is like the, the waves of, of an ocean, right? It's bringing in new shells all the time. It's bringing in new leads, new deals. It's the lifeblood of the business, the mailing and the marketing pieces. And it's dead on there. It's, it, it solves all problems. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've been waiting to have that sign for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. the best way to get rid of this whole, I love when you talk about gotta have landitis, right? And the worst part about it is if you just mail a little bit because you're tentative and you get a couple of, or maybe one accepted offer, now you are at the mercy of that one offer and it will torture you. It mm -hmm. will torture you, right? Because then if you don't get it, you're like, oh man. It's funny because um, um, I was kind of, I was kind of one time I was looking at some other, other types of uh, real estate, which if you've ever dealt with any other types of real estate, this is by far to me, it's a lot easier to understand land is a whole lot easier to understand. But I was looking about, I don't know, about two years ago at some other types of real estate. And um, these were bigger deals. I'm talking like a million, it's multifamily. It was million to million and a half dollars to, to, to buy a multifamily property. And, you know, you, the, the deal flow is important, but man, let me tell you something. You start to invest your time on one of those deals, because when you go to do your due diligence, you're spending time and money on due diligence. And then if for some reason the thing falls through, which I had two of them fall through, man, it stings. And the thing is, is that it really is hard to keep that deal flow coming when, when you know that you're, <laughs> what are you going to do? Right. Or just write checks for a million and a half dollars. I mean, maybe some people could do it for me. <laughs> It, I was going to have to like, under, like I could only do a certain amount of deals at a time. It was a hard thing to get, kind of get going. And uh, I had two deals fall through on me and I was just like, let me go back to land yeah. because land is so much simpler, right? You know, it's, it's, it, these things just keep coming through it. They just keep coming in. And when, when you get the systems in place and you get everything flowing, it just flows for you. It really does. You, I always cut Scott off, so I wanted to let him go. I, I, I have no, a that's so here. nice of you. Scott. See, you conditioned me to the point to just wait for you because I <laughs> <laughs> that's how it is. No, it's 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 all about uh, it's all about numbers. It's all about consistency, and as long as you are consistently mailing, uh, all of your problems will be solved. You'll have deal flow coming in. Uh, you'll have deals to be done. And now that we've done it so many times, we've rinsed and repeated so many times, it just becomes second nature. And then, uh, you know, that that's a perfect scalable and auto automated business. So, yeah. But, you know, that's what I think that's one of the, uh, the tricks here is that one of the tricks is the fact that what you just said, Scott, you have to understand something. Like if, if you went out and bought an apartment building, 
you know, as a land, uh, as a, as a real estate investor, you go out and you buy this apartment building. Well then, you know, essentially you're going to have a management team there. You're, you know, probably already in place or you're going to change it out and, and do some stuff, but then you can just walk away from it because the, the, the thing just kind of runs itself in a way. I mean, I know there's management components to it, but you know, it's, 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 it's there. It's kind of established already. When you start land investing, you are building a business, right? Like you're having to build your business and you are truly like the entrepreneur here. You've got to wear all of the hats. You got to, you got to be the mail clerk. You got to be the due diligence person. You got to be the marketer, the ad writer. You got to be the salesperson. You got to be the bookkeeper. There's a lot of plates spinning in there. And unless you go out and you build a VA team to help you and you get really good at delegating, it will become overwhelming. Like it, it, it's easy to manage just a few notes, but man, let me tell you something. When, when you have like, I think like even 30 notes, 200 notes, it becomes kind of not even manageable anymore because you got to have really good systems, right? You got to have the good systems in place and you have to build it because well, look, nobody's selling their land business. It's not like you can go out and say, I want to buy a land business. You got to create it. You know, I'm speaking about all the different processes. I'm wondering personally yourself, we talk about this paralysis by over analysis. Typically we talk about that when people are uh, looking to do their first mailing, right? They, they overthink this process, but for yourself personally, building your systems over the, you know, over time, were there certain areas that you suffered this paralysis by, you know, more than others? I mean, a lot of people, we know it is in the mailings, but just, you know, building this overall system, were there any areas that just you in particular, you know, had a hard time uh, maybe letting go of, or just, you know, again, just looking at this, I think everybody at some level has that type of uh, challenge, right? This paralysis by over analysis. And I'm just curious, you know, uh, to the point where you're at now, but building to that over the years, were there certain areas that really struck you with this paralysis? Yeah, you know, what, what's funny is that um, even in flight school, like the flight school for August, they're at the point where it's time to mail. And I'm having to like, you know, pull out the drill sergeant on some people and say, you got to mail, you got to mail, where's your mailings? You know, it's, it's, it's like, I've got to get that done because it's easy to let other things jump in the way. So, you know, like it's easy to say, oh man, I, I, I can't mail because I don't have a company set up. Garbage mail. Mm -hmm. right? Like it, it's easy. I mean, someone even said to me like, oh man, I, I can't believe that uh, I know nothing about land investing and two weeks in I'm having to mail offer letters. Yeah. Because you can overthink it. And that's why I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you into the deep end and you will swim. I promise you you'll swim. But like marketing and marketing was hard for me to give up. It really was. It was, uh, you know, like I felt like it was the lifeblood of the business. Mailing was easy. I got rid of that very quickly. Due diligence was, was, was out mailing. I'm sorry, marketing. Marketing was, was a hard thing to get rid of because without the marketing, without the ads, no one's going to know you're there, right? Like you can have the, the, the greatest properties in the world, but you still have to market them. You still have to do it. And, you know, it, it all comes down to getting people's attention. But, you know, essentially, once, once you let that go and you realize that it's all replaceable, man, all of a sudden your life just becomes so much better because you're, you're doing the things in your business that you enjoy. And honestly, that's the only way that you should have a business is to, to, to run the business of doing the things that you enjoy. Right. It's interesting. I always say this, our business has two gas pedals, you know, the mailing and the marketing, and you got to throttle them both up. You know, it's, they got to have equal measure. You know, if you just do one, well, that's good, but you got to throttle them both up. So that's really good. It's, it's so funny that you mentioned that because in flight school tonight, I used the two gas pedal analogy. I use the exact same thing, Mike. And what I, what I said was, what I said was like, just imagine just, you do have, you do have two gas pedals and two brake pedals. And just imagine like you, you start your land business and you're like the gas pedal. You're like, let's go. And you floor it. Right. And you're like, all of a sudden let's go. And then you start to get some deals coming in the door. And like, instead of taking your foot off the gas a little bit, you know what most people do? They hit the brake and they go forward yeah. and they stop their mailings. And then they do the same thing with the marking. Like, so now they're slamming on the brakes on the gas, uh, on the brakes on the mailing side, e coming to a complete stop. Then they floor it on the marketing. They take off and they don't have that equilibrium. 
And really this business is about the equilibrium in the mailing and the marketing. It's about buying properties and learning how to sell them, finding your voice, finding your marketing voice, finding your sales voice. It's, it's really about, I, you know, like in, in the Navy, you know, it's, it's about getting your sea legs, okay? being able to walk on the boat without falling over uh, or getting sick. In the land business, it's about getting your land legs. You know, like literally it's about finding that, that equilibrium between I got to mail a hundred a week so I can buy one property a week. And then I'm going to market every single day so that my target is I'm going to try to sell one property a week. And then you start to get equilibrium in there, right? It's, it becomes a dance, a beautiful dance. Yes. But you can you find the legs. <laughs> I feel like we should a definitely beautiful should dance. Goth Brooks the dance should have been one of the songs. <sighs> I just set you guys up. You like you guys should now like he said dance. I set you guys up for like the song. Where is it? Like oh, we got a yeah, song. Yeah. Well, I've got a running list now, Scott. We have a running list of of songs that we're going to present at the next musical. It'll be there. Yeah. I just thought I, I just thought of another one when we were speaking because you have to be a jack of all trades, you know, to do this land business. You go from one role to the next to the next to the next. And we want to learn those roles first before we delegate. Uh, so you know the song "Come a Chameleon," "Karma Chameleon," right? Yeah. By Boy George. There's another one. Yeah. You know that one, Mike? I know the song, but I'm not sure where you're going with it. I love that song. You got to be a chameleon in this thing. You got to uh, you got to change colors. You got to transition from one thing to the next. All the songs I sang. Same form, the- but you're a different color. But that's one of the songs that I sang in the 80s, but I really didn't know the words I was singing. <laughs> what is he saying? I don't know. I don't even know what he's saying. It's by Boy George. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, my God. All right. So when is the follow-up? When, when's the next musical? Like next week? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, yeah, I, th- I think uh, I'm thinking maybe quarterly. Quarterly, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I maybe thinking, you know. So, what, wait a minute now. What was your favorite song <laughs> of the night? Then you said it was. Uh, I know the end. Uh, wow. Oh, I like the I like the Land Moto song. Like, uh, I'll be there for you. I'll be yeah. there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's, I'll yeah. be there for you. These five plates, I'll teach to you. You don't mail, swing a bat at you. I'll be there for you. I built LG Pass for you, land motor and accounting too. I gave up my nights for you. I'll be there for you. That's yep. your theme song. That's it. That's it. it <laughs> with that one. I mean, that was just impromptu. I'm sorry. We didn't plan that. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> you got that memorized. You've been singing it. Just What's constantly. What, what, what was the one for uh, "Come On Eileen"? Like, uh, oh Scott, you got that one. Well, so uh, yeah, that was for Eileen De Augustine. Uh, that was how we enticed her to get into flight school. We sang to her at boot camp. This is how it all started. The whole nightcap musical is because we were like, "Come on, Eileen," and we just like, "Wait a minute." And then uh, we were mispronouncing her, her name. By the hey, way, I, I want I want everybody watching this to see what I've just done. I've got you guys singing again. Like, <laughs> forget quarterly. This is every week. I mean, I'm looking right now. Where are the dang comments? Like, we need to go to Scott. Yeah, you got him singing. I mean, like, I'm doing it for you guys. <laughs> Where's the love? Oh, we actually got a question in here. This will be All great. Right. It's from Michael Elon. All right, yeah. uh, Scott. Scott and others, do you prefer to throttle your mail? Or do you like to send out a bulk mailer? A bulk mailer might allow you to pick the best deals when all the responses come in about the same time. Thoughts? I'm trying to interpret the question. Are they saying like send out like a few thousand at a time as opposed to a consistent few hundred per week? Is that what the thought is? That's what I'm that's, thinking of it. That's what I yeah. think he's getting at, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm a big believer in consistent mailing every week whether you want to do it every day every week i don't like the thousand at one time or the five thousand at one time because there's a couple of reasons one I, I see what you're saying about you know choosing the best ones but you see the deal is like for me it, it it's 
it's making me choose deals because of a cash flow situation, right? Like it's, it's saying, I don't have enough cash, so I'm going to choose the very best deals as opposed to, I'm just going to mail every week. And by being consistent, I'm going to sell every single week, which is going to create more cash. Okay. So now what's happening is I have an abundance mentality on the cash side, as opposed to, I only have a certain amount of cash that I can, I can deploy in, into more deals. So I'm a big believer that I'm just going to be consistent. The cash will be there. I can tell you it, Mark, Mark, Mark and I like to, um, I remember I asked Mark one time, like when I got going, I think it was at my very first boot camp. I said to him, I said, Hey, Mark, I've got one, I bought five properties. I've got one left. I've sold them all on terms for $99 down and $99 a month. That means that I've kind of like blown through like $10,000. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, uh, how do I make a sale happen for cash? And he's like, you don't. Like the market will do it. He's like, but if you want a cash sale, well then maybe in your brain, start thinking about a term sale and the cash will appear, right? Like mm -hmm. the cash always appears. And Scott, you know, like not, not, to, not to share too much private information about our call, but I remember your very first uh, like coaching call, you and Aaron yeah. were on it. And I said to you, I said, cause that was a concern you had too. And I said to you, I'm like, Scott, crazy story. Whenever you need cash, start thinking about it and the cash will appear. And Aaron was like, yeah, I believe that the cash will appear. And it's the weirdest thing. The cash always appears. Do you agree? I do agree now. It, it always appeared during that yeah. first year of coaching. <laughs> it was, it was I can't explain it, right? Like I can't, I can't explain how or why. I'm just telling you that when you need cash, the cash will appear and someone will pay off their note. Someone will pay it off early. Cash, uh, you'll make a cash sale. I mean, like they, they just come at, at random times. And what happened with that property is I, went, I left my first boot camp, and I'm like, do I want cash or I'm not sure what I should be asking for here, you know, vague. I'm like, I just need cash. And I put it out in the marketplace and I just said, hey, you know, I'll sell in terms of I'm really looking for cash and I got a cash buyer on it. And from there, it, it just kind of starts to kick off. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You know, I think that <clears throat> the great thing about this consistent mailing and eventually you are just surrounded in deals or potential deals. It's like you, uh, it just, you reach this critical point and all of a sudden, even of their own accord, they start coming to you because people recognize now you, you've developed a name as a buyer, um, as a land investor and deals just start surrounding you. Um, they, they really do. So it's a, it's a wonderful environment. Really you're, you're, yeah, it's funny because uh, people will, will see that you're by marketing in a certain area and being consistent, people will see that you, you are a land investor in that area. And I always joke in flight school that, look, people won't show up to your door to throw the land at you. But at some point in time, they do, right? Like in the yeah. beginning, <laughs> at some point, like people will bring you bulk deals. And, um, you know, it's funny, Mike, because since Scott last year, um, I actually had a guy bring me a bulk deal. Like I didn't even know this guy and he came, he came to us and he's like, um, Hey, I got a property. I'd like to sell you guys. And we're like, Oh, okay. And we we're buying in, in this area. And, uh, he gave us he, he's like, here it is. And so we, we bought the deal from him. And the deal was that he wanted to meet me. He was like a local guy. Like he was local to me and, uh, the land wasn't local, but he was, and he's like, I want to meet, I want to meet you. And I'm like, um, oh, okay. So we they we set up an appointment on a Saturday at a um, a Cracker Barrel. And so I'm like, man, this is really kind of strange that the guy wants to meet me. You know, like this is really really weird. And um, so I drive the 30 minutes to the Cracker Barrel. I drive up there, and I'm not sure what the heck to expect with this guy. The weird thing though was that. Um, his last name was Todd. So same as me. And his first initial was, uh, was K and, um, which happens to be the first initial of my wife. And what's weird about this whole deal is that we did one transaction. He sold me one property and he brought his own notary, which is a friend of his. And I was just like, we, this is weird. They're eating breakfast. I give them the money. <laughs> The, 
they, they notarize it, talk to them for a little bit. And um, I'm like, all right, man, thank you so much. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you later. He's like, yeah, no problem. About a week later, he calls and he's like, hey, I've got uh, five more properties I'd like to sell you. And his pricing wasn't necessarily the cheapest, but it was, it was like a wholesale deal, if you will. So I started buying them, started buying them from him. And then he introduced me to his buddy and his buddy sold me like a boatload of them. And then all of a sudden, Mike, they started selling me the really good properties, stuff that you couldn't even get like on the lake and other stuff like in, in this area. And they were still a little bit more expensive than what I was accustomed to paying. But at one point they came to me and they're like, Hey, listen, uh, we got this, we got a big deal and we want you to buy. It. And I think it was, um, I want to say it was like 50 properties, but it was like a hundred thousand dollars. And I'm like, Holy cow. I can't imagine spending a hundred thousand dollars on this one thing. And we did, we, we bought them. And I can tell you that like that, that, that relationship that we built has really been very profitable. And like literally the guy is, he's, he's, he's a good friend. He's out of the land business now because he sold me all his stuff. But here's the funny thing. He was known in this area. Like he was the land guy in this area and some other people, like he's basically passed the torch on to me. And so I'm like, okay, that's really cool. But along the way, he also created some, in, some enemies, right? Like there's some people that didn't like him. <laughs> because his initials are the same as my wife's. <laughs> and our company name is my initials and my wife's initials. They think that he's part of my business, okay? And so like the, the haters came after me too. So, you know, there was like a, a, a mixed side of it. But I'm like, I'm not affiliated with the guy. But he shares your same name. Yeah, but I don't even know the guy. Well, his initials are in your company. I'm like, no, it's my wife's initials. Oh. I actually had one person tell me like, because uh, they, they thought the guy was a scammer. And I'm like, no, I can prove it to you. Look, here's my wife's, you know, like, here's her name. Here's my marriage certificate. They're like, oh, okay. I'm like, it had nothing to do with that guy. So you got to be careful. It's kind of a mixed bag. I, I love the fact that, you know, what you're pointing to, too, is, a, is another greater point is the fact that, you know, building the relationships and, you know, in the beginning, I always worried, like, what am I going to tell them if they, if they ask what I'm going to do with the land? I was all nervous. Like, and then I realized the truth, the honesty, the transparency. And when, when you actually speak to someone honestly, you tell them the whole situation, you develop a real sense of trust. And I built some really good relationships with people similar to what you're talking about, where you, you can end up buying more land from them. They refer you to other people. It's just building that trust is so huge. And just being, I mean, we're, we're in a business that is sometimes looked at as uh, unscrupulous, right? A lot of people that just take advantage of people, but we are ethical. We're transparent. We're honest. I always said about the land gate team as, you know, we attract like-minded individuals. All of us that work uh, in this, in this group, we're all the same, ethical, honest, transparent, and, you know, uh, that really does, um, you know, go a long way to build these relationships. And it's really interesting how it, it can progress. It's funny, Mike, because a lot of people, like if, if a seller says to you, like, what are you going to do with this land? I think it scares people. They're like, uh, <laughs> they don't know how to answer that question. And I always say that the only way to answer any question is to be honest with them. Like pe people tell me like, well, man, I want, I want $30,000 for my land that you offered me 3000 for. And I always tell them like, okay, look, good luck. It's not going to happen. But if you want that, here's the very best way for you to go get it. You yeah. can post it on Craigslist. I, I walked them through the sales process. Yes. <laughs> you know, like, they're like, wait a minute. You mean you just told me how to sell this land? I'm like, yeah, because first, you're not going to get $30,000 for it. And second, you know, but if you want to maximize what you can get here, I'll even tell you how much to sell it for, sell it on Craigslist. And then it's funny because they're like, well, when you do that, do you have to take it back? I'm like, oh yeah, about 30, 40% of the time, you know, people stop paying and, you know, <laughs> never know who's going to stop paying. And then they're like, uh, really 30, 40%. I'm like, well, it depends. You know, like it depends on how much you get down and how much you don't. It's, I mean, like if you get nothing down, yeah, it's going to be 30, 40% of the time. 
Right. And so, you know, you walk them through that and they're like, well, I don't want to take it back. I don't want to do that. I don't want to collect money. I'm like, well, then the very best thing to do is to sell it to me. <laughs> well, not that price. Okay. Well, what price? But you know, it's <laughs> because people get scared of telling people I'm going to go make more money off of it. Right. And I mean, I, I get it. I understand it. But at the same time, I think that, you know, when, when you, when you're not honest, people pick up on it. When you're not honest, People, right. you know, they, they know like you're holding something back, you're shady, you're slimy, mm -hmm. like just I, look, sell to me, sell to somebody else. The reality is, is that if you don't sell it at some point, you're going to hold on to it for a long time. And then, you know, like if they say to me like, well, I'll just give it to my grandkids, I'll leave it to them. And they'll, I always tell them like, Hey, listen, if you're going to do that, you better make sure you have it in a trust or you better make sure you, you better call an attorney and talk to them about putting in the right deed. Cause otherwise your grandkids aren't going to be able to sell it. And then the county's going to get it back. So, you know, there, there's different ways that you can spend that as well. Very cool. Awesome. I see we have another question. Oh, we got see we the got. question about selling the land with a very low down payment. Ah, Scott Todd. Uh, do you always sell your land with a very low down payment? It seems that would lead to a high default rate. Do you sometimes require 20% down or more? Good question for Scott. That's a great question. So look, um, at, at flight school, in flight school, I talk about the capital strategy, okay? Like we, we have a whole module on managing capital. We have a whole module on like building your, your, your mindset around the financial aspects of this business. And in that module, I explain the capital strategy that I use, and it has nothing to do with the down payment of the property. It has to do with my ability to get my capital back. So my own personal goal is that I want to get 20% of my invested capital back on the down payment. So if I spend a thousand dollars on the property, ideally I'd like to get 200 dollars down. I don't always get it. Sometimes it's a hundred, but I try to get that. Then what I try to do is I try to get the remaining capital back at a 10% rate. Meaning that remember I paid a thousand dollars for this land. I got 200 down that left me with $800 of my money back into the deal. I try to get a minimum of 10% of that money back every single month. That means I, my monthly payment would be like $80 a month. I'd probably round it to a hundred. And um, that, that gets me my yield that I want. It gets me my capital back. And guess what? If, if for some reason I take these back, I see it as a godsend. I love getting property back. It's like found money for me because they have paid down my principal a little bit. And uh, next thing you know, you have a lot of notes that the, the return is infinite. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I mean... A successful deal we talk about all the time is getting your money out in 10 months, right? Absolutely. And yeah. what, do we, what do we all learn from Scott Todd at, at boot camp, Mike? We all learn, or what do we all learn from Mark Podolsky at boot camp about the down payment? You may publicize the down payment as 99 down, right? but what are you going to say to the person when you're on the phone with them? Yeah, how much can you put down? Yeah, how much, how do, much, you how much do you want to put down, right? right. Right. How many killer deals have we all had where we may be, may be advertising property at 149 down? You know, I just had one a couple months ago. Uh, I, I can't remember. I think I was advertising it for 500 down. I, I bought the property for $3,000. Um, and he paid me 3,500 down. Like down payment for a property. for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's amazing. So Always ask that question. How much do you want to put down? Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because if any of you were in flight school tonight where we talked about sales, I forgot to bring that up. So Scott, thanks for bringing that up. So if you're watching this and you're in flight school tonight, when, when you ask about the down payment, make sure you don't just say, well, I want $99 down. It's not what you want. It's what they want to do. So, right. Hey, how much were you thinking about putting down today? Uh, Scott, it's funny because uh, I got some sales numbers for this year uh, last week. And um, I was really kind of excited to see these numbers. So these numbers uh, reflect my company sales through the first um, eight months of the year. And um, we had sold 
$1.8 million with the land. That's total enterprise value of land. Doesn't mean that we've collected it all. It will come over, you know, anywhere from anywhere from uh, 12 months to 70. I think the longest we've done this year is a hundred months. So we'll come at some point in the future. We've staged that for later. And frankly, some of it we won't get because of, of defaults. We, um, that $1.18 million with the land was sold on land that we paid $248,000 for. So we invested $248,000 and we turned around and sold it for $1.18 million. The down payments that we collected in the same time frame was $215,000. So, <laughs> so essentially we have floated about $35,000 and it, that's a little misleading because I have a big inventory. So I keep right. buying land. Like I just keep buying land. Like I just, I kind of have a land. I'm like a land hoarder. I just keep buying land. And so, you know, <laughs> I've actually got more money invested in land than what that, that number perceives. But from what we've sold, we've gotten almost our investment back on the down payment with the exception of $35,000. Not bad returns, right? Not, not bad at all. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. But that's that how you inspire people. What does? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Exactly. I mean, like literally, I don't know of another bit. Not, I mean, like, you know, you, you go to another real estate investor, like, oh, wow, we've sold uh, $1.8 $1. million worth of, of uh, like, yeah, what was that? Two houses, you know, three houses, big deal. 10 houses, big deal. Yeah, it's, it's about, um, I think so far, it's like 170 properties, somewhere in that range. Okay, it's a lot of work. But that said, man, the, the passive income that gets generated from that is larger than what I could ever imagine that this business would be. Yeah, that's amazing, Scott. Todd. So, okay, so I have a question for you guys, all right? So one of my, like, do you have a more, like, do you have a daily ritual of like your goals? Or you do anything to write out your goals every day? Like, what do you guys do? You just like kind of say, this is what I want to do. And you just kind of hope for, or do you, do you have a morning ritual that you follow? I do have a morning ritual that I follow. And I don't know if it's land specific, it's life specific. You know, I think that I, I want to win the day in many ways. And one of them is obviously uh, my health and longevity. I want to be around as long as possible and enjoying the, the benefits of what this land brings. So I do have a daily ritual in the morning, getting up and uh, certain walk that we do and then, and then just priming for the day. You know, I think it's important to start the day because um, it's so easy to start the day with concerns, right? To wake up and then think about all these different things that could go, you know, that just plague our mind about, you know. But yeah, I do have a, I do have a kind of a morning ritual routine uh, that I do every day. And um, but if it, it, it's more than just land, I'd have to say, to be honest with you, it's more about, it's more about you know, my experience of life in general. Yeah. Okay. Hey, while you're talking, keep, keep talking because I want to get something. I want to share something with you guys. Okay. I've never shared this before. <laughs> uh, I would have to say that um, my morning ritual at this point in time, well, let's just say in a few weeks, it's going to change because I uh, am resigning from my J-O-B. And that's pretty exciting, pretty exciting stuff. So thank you. So I'm going to be able to create uh, a routine that really maximizes um, my time in the business, my time with my family, uh, my time with hobbies that have gone to the wayside. And I'm really looking forward to establishing those routines. I would say what I do now uh, mostly is I get up in the morning, spend a little bit of time with the kids. And if I can walk the dog in the morning, it kind of clears my head and gets me ready for the day. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see how all that changes here in about two weeks and two days, because that's when it starts. So I can't wait to, to get up on that. All right. So look, here, here's what I want to share with you guys. And I've never shared this with all anybody. Right. This is awesome. So this is this is like, you know, like this is real stuff. Okay. Like, um, one of my daily routines and it's been this way for a while is one of, I mean, this is one of them, but I get up every day and I write down, I got this from Grant Cardone. It's not my idea, but it's, you got to execute on it. 
is every day I write down my five goals. And these are not like my goals for the day. These are long-term goals, right? Like a long-term things, things that you can't even imagine that would come true. Like paint, paint your ideal picture, like your ideal life. And I remember I was, I was talking to my wife one day when I, when I started this and I said to her, I'm like, Hey, if you could pick a house that you want to live in, like, where would it be? And so we, we came up with like this part of Florida that we really both like. And we imagine like this house on the water and, um, you know, we, we, we actually went and, um, I don't know if I, we actually went and we went to realtor.com and we found, we found that type of a house that we would look at and we're like, okay, I'm looking for my phone because I was going to see if I had it, but I don't even know where my phone is right now. So essentially we, we went out and we're looking and it turns out that this house was like, um, I don't know, it's, it's like one, one point five uh, million dollars. Well, I was like, that's crazy. We can't, you know, you can't afford that. How are you going to do that? And, um, I said, look, dreams are cheap. Dreams are free. You can dream all you want, right? Like, let, let's just put it out there to the universe. And let's see what happens. So every day I ha have a routine that I was going to write down what I want. Big, big high level goals. And in this book right here, this book, this was, this was my book that started in 2016. So January, 2016, I started this book and I found this book because I, I have them. I found this book the other day. And I'm like, oh, 2016. I wonder what my goals were from 2016. Like this was the year that I lost my job. I, I lost my job in February. Um, I call the day that, that I found out that my team was being outsourced. I call that move your feet day because that's the day I really had to start hustling. I mean, I was already hustling, but that's the day it all came through. So I look at my, my book and I, I kind of chuckled because um, I went back and I'm looking and, and I'll just share with you, like from the beginning of that year, I changed my goals and I just want to tell you like where, where these things are. Okay. So um, let's see. Um, goal, goal number one. And, you know, I'll share with you what's on these pages because I think that if you get into a routine like this, you'll be amazed at what you can produce. Okay. Goal number one, I have, a passive income of $50,000 a month. Okay. Like that's, that's a, a number that I could never even imagine as, as being achievable, but I figured why, why not ask for it? I have an awesome family dynamic and I can spend uh, unlimited time with my family at will. Uh, I live, I live on this Island uh, in my dream beach home. I don't, by the way, that's not, that has not come true. Um, See, I, I have raised, um, I have raised a million dollars in capital, not, 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 I, I did kind of raise it, but then we, we gave it back because the multifamily deal didn't go through a long story, not for today. And I weigh 170 pounds, which I don't, I'm over that. Okay. But you'll, what you'll notice about these goals is that they're, they're, they're not just all money motivated, right? Like there's a money component to it. There's a relationship component to it. There's a lifestyle component to it. There's a family dynamic component to it. It's the big complete picture. It's like a solid wheel to me. Nice. And every day I wrote down these goals and they can change. And you don't have to write down the same five goals. Maybe you have 10 goals you write down. Maybe you alternate. It's whatever you're thinking about that morning. Like, well, this is what I want. Boom, this is what I want. I can tell you that the passive income number has been achieved. It's kind of, as you guys know, passive income goes up and down. But at one point it was there, it's gone down a little bit, it comes back again, it, it's, 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 it, it, it flows. But I can tell you that that number has been, has been there. And it's amazing because I never thought it was possible. Like in a way I did, I wanted it to be true, but you have to put it out there. You have to believe that you can get something and then you start working toward it. It has to be big to motivate you. It has to be a big goal. Cause if these little goals, who wants to do it? Like, if you just said, I want $3,000 passive income and $3,000 doesn't move the needle for you, you're not going to be excited about it. You got to have something big that you're working towards. Awesome family dynamic. I mean, that's kind of a vague goal in a way, but you know, to me, I, I just imagined at the time that I could just, just decide I'm going to spend the day with my wife. Just boom, just going to spend the day with my wife. I don't have to check with anybody. I can clear my own calendar, you know, like clear my calendar today. Today, what made me think about this 
was today my, my wife says, Hey, um, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, go to lunch and uh, may, maybe go look at, um, look at some, some landscaping for our house. You know, we're going to do some changes in landscaping. So we spent the day at a nursery right? Like a, a tree nursery, you know, like a, far, a a plant nursery, looking at plants and having fun. And we went to lunch. And the only meeting I had on my calendar today was uh, the, the mastermind call. And I, I always try to make that a priority, but you know what? I'm like, spend the day with my wife today. That's it. Okay. That creates an awesome family dynamic when you don't have to worry about, you know, the money component, or you don't have to worry about the stress of the job. I mean, all that stuff becomes like a rock in your shoe. And when you have the money, you take the rock out and you're like, okay, I'm walking better today. It's, it just makes life a little bit better. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're happy. You have to create those other components to it. I don't have my house yet. I'll get there. You know, uh, that's still one of the goals I write down every day. I'll get there one day. I don't know when. And the weight, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a little over it. Okay, I'm a little over it, but maybe, maybe I'll get there. Maybe, I don't know. It all depends, okay? The, the last thing, and I know I'm going long here, but... No, this is good. This is awesome. The, the other thing that I always did was at the end of the day, I wrote down five successes, okay? And you might think, man, I don't have any successes today. That seems lame. I can tell you that when I look at some of these things, okay, like... You'll be amazed at, at what you would identify as, as a success on a given day. I mean, it, it can be small. It can be big. Some days are small. Some days are big. I'd like to, I'd like to share with you guys these. Are, okay. So here we go. This was from, um, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing too. Like this is, from, um, this is from Tuesday, January 5th, 2016. Here's my successes for that day. Ready? Um, I, I had um, Craig, Craigslist because I was still trying to work through posting domination at the time. I, I had tweaked it and I was having some success. No one knew about posting domination at the time. And I put down that I had Craigslist automated three ads stuck. Okay. Like three ads stuck. That was my success for the day. Well, I was tweaking this whole thing. I did... Two bulk deals. Now, what's a bulk deal? The bulk deal was that we sold more than one property on one sale. So we sold two properties of or two transactions with two properties. That was my that was a, a good day. We had two of our own properties listed on landmoto.com. Like that meant that we bought two properties and we got them listed on our own website. Look how lame that that one is, right? <laughs> I got one accepted offer that day. And we made um, um, one accepted offer and we moved one out of due diligence. That, that was my success back in the day. And when, when I flip through these things, some of these things today don't seem like they're that big of a deal. You know, like uh, the next day we had five, five ads that we placed. Uh, we got one accepted offer. I made a slight improvement to Landmoto that day. All of these little things that you do, they're all successes and they build on each other. And if you can just stop at the end of the day and write them down, just write down, figure out five things. I don't care how small they are and they don't have to be business related. Maybe it's related to your goals. Like, man, I was able to save a dollar today towards my house or I lost a pound or I ate you know, 300 less calories today, whatever it is identify those five successes. And I promise you that when you look back two years later, you'll be like, man, these successes sure seem lame, lame <laughs> from what I'm doing today, but they build on each other. And it's what keeps the motivation going. It's what keeps everything moving forward. I'm telling you, this book is, is kind of comical for me to look back at because when I look back at it, I'm thinking like, man, this was, this was definitely in a part of my life where, um, I mean, like I literally look back at this, this one book right here and you start to really relive some of the emotion that you were going through. Like when, when I found out that my job was being outsourced, that was, um, November, uh, Jan uh, February 10th that day. And you'll see like, here's, here's the day from that. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but I wrote right here, like it's move your feet day that 
February 10th is forever move your feet day for me because that was a day where the world moved in one direction and I had to go in another and I've never looked back at it. And successes from that day was that um, I sold my 22nd lot of the year that year, uh, 22nd lot that year, I sold it. I added $120 to my passive income and my passive income on, um, on that day was, um, had moved up to $9,620. That's where it had moved to. In that case, I mailed out offer letters and I, and I got three deeds out the door that day that I was gonna buy properties. Little successes, little successes, they build on each other. I highly recommend that you take that and incorporate this into part of your morning routine or your daily ritual. Thank you very much for that, Scott. That's, That's awesome. awesome, Scott. Thank you so much. Extremely helpful. That's amazing. All right. I think on that note. I think, <laughs> how do you top that? Can't top that. Well, no, you I, told me I, that you wanted this to top the musical. I hope I've delivered. You just did it. You just did it. Just, that that is, uh, it. I think I, we had our most, the highest number of live viewers ever during your, your speech there. Honestly, we did. Oh, really? Really? How many did we have? Well, we live, we got about, we had about 23 or 24 live, uh, live, live watchers. We live yeah. a lot in the reruns, but that was probably some of the top numbers, Scott, uh, that we've had right there and that. You grabbed them. I think that uh, I just think if you sing next time, we'll double that. <laughs> well, listen, I've I've got something else. Like you guys invite me back sometime. I've got something else. Like I will continue with that that morning routine thing because there's one thing that I started doing. Um, there's one thing that I started doing. I don't know about six months ago that I can tell you that it seems counterintuitive. But man, oh man, does it really get you focused in. And um, it's part of the, the daily routine. So I'm going to make everybody wait until I'm going to save well, it. He's just coming my, back. Don't worry. He's coming he's, back. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. Someday. And when I do, I'll, I'll bring back that story, right? That's awesome. And oh, by the way, it looks like uh, Jeannie Morum is uh, watching. And Jeannie, I hope that you have not added Facebook back to your phone. Um, cause I told you, I'm going to keep on to you for that one. So <laughs> yeah. she was on Facebook quite a bit today. So I don't know if that, uh, I don't know if she's stuck to that, but we do have a question here from Michael Elon Scott. Um, uh, let's, let, if we could cap what you were talking about, can you recommend three goals that every land investor should have? Is there something you think that now I know you were saying that that personal, but do you think there's some general goals that everybody should have in particular? Uh, look, I, I, I just think that the, when it comes to goals, you know, like I, I think there's a difference between a goal and like a, a routine, right? Like the, the goals should really be personal to you. They should be meaningful to you. And, you know, I, I can't tell you that, you know, like whatever your passive income is, uh, whatever your number is, you know, I, look, the number is the number, right? Like there, you probably have heard that like money doesn't make you happy. And like I just said, like money, money is like, um, to me, it's like a rock in your shoe. Okay. Like once you get your, your expenses met, literally, you know, you got the rock out of your shoe, you know, you're going to eat, you know, your house is going to be okay. You know, the insurance is going to be paid. Medical bills are covered. You can walk easier, right? Like it doesn't just mean that you're happy now. It just means that now you can start to enjoy the other things in life, you know, like the family and et cetera. I think that when you write the goals, I think you have to have a well-rounded goal, right? Like a, a, a set of goals. So like you, you should have a financial component to it. I think that without the financial component, you lose, you lose the kind of the, the motivation because like I said, you're going to hit the number. It might take you longer than what you think, but you will hit the number that you want if you just keep working at it. And then what, right? Like it's, it's almost like, uh, it just reminds me of like the Truman Show. Anybody watch the Truman Show, the movie? You know, Jim Carrey at the, you know, at, the, at the end, he's like, I'm sorry, it's an old movie, so I'm going to tell you the ending. Uh, at the end, he, he discovers that it's just a, a TV set and he, he walks off. And everybody's like, what do we do now? What, what do we watch now? Like, what happens now? And the reality is, is that you've got to have the next goal. So what's the next money goal? What's the next target to keep moving forward? 
I think that you need something for your family. I think that you need a, some sort of goal about, you know, whether it's your family dynamic, um, maybe it's a charity that you want to, maybe there's a charity goal there. You know, I want to be the biggest contributor to this charity. I want to donate X amount of money to this charity so that you can give back to the community. I think that, that should be a component there. You got to think about your health. Maybe, it, maybe it's your weight. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's your jumping jacks. Maybe it's how many hours you, you walk a day. I mean, there's, there's different ways that you can kind of calculate that and they have to be meaningful to you because I can give you three goals, but you could be like, well, the, the, those don't mean anything to me. And then they will be useless to you. Good point. Awesome. All right. She's not answering the question about Facebook, but she just wrote, ha ha. So I'm going to assume that. <laughs> All right, Jeannie, I'm going to leave you to, to be tonight because I think we came to the end of nightcap, haven't we? Yeah, we're pretty much at the end. We have to bring, uh, we'll bring, we should do a refill with Matt. We'll bring him in for the outro. <laughs> <laughs> God, thank you so much. This has been incredible. Really, um, I, I know awesome. I, you didn't have to share some personal uh, things like that. You did, and it's really, I know it's truly helped. It's helped me, and I know it's helped people that are listening. So I, I thank you for that. That was really, really nice that you did that. Yep, no problem. It was awesome. We look forward to the next, uh, the next tidbit of info you can give us. I'm going to save it just for you guys. Awesome. All right. Did you want a Scott? You had a little uh, Scott Bossman. Did you want a little? Uh, we ended with that little. Uh, yeah. Little... Well, okay. I can do this for Scott. So you know, Scott boxed us last week, and he said how much <laughs> he liked the nightcap. And there was one song that I had mentioned that uh, <clears throat> that I had not sung, but even be, even though I mentioned it, he he had said that he was out to dinner with his wife, and just the song just kept going through his mind over and over and over again. So I, I thought we might, you know, end, end Nightcap tonight with, with this song. So, hear it. so you can replay it over and over and over in your head. Tomorrow's got to that. All right. Uh, Islands in the Stream. Uh, uh, you play, love that song. Land investing version. Bring it on, Scott. Land investing version. All right, here we go. Uh, I got to think about this. Well, here we go. You ready? Investors with a dream. That is who we are. No boss in between. How can we be wrong? Sail away with us to another world. And we rely on each other. Uh -uh. From one other to another. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> All right. That's there you go. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, on that note, work, Scott. You can see on that. On that note, I, I brought Matt for Matt. We didn't have a refill, but you're back for the outro. We uh, I'm sure you uh, like everybody I, else. Loved, uh, I was drinking the whole time. It was just like being in flight school back in the day. I I miss Scott Todd. Scott, I'm just gonna watch the reruns every Thursday from now on, just so I can have more inspiration from you. All right. That was really good. <laughs> Sounds good. All <laughs> right. I'm gonna share the screen. Here we go. You guys see that, Scott? Uh, Scott Blossman, thank you so much, my man. I always love doing the show. We, we have a great time on the show, and uh, you didn't disappoint with that song. That was phenomenal. And uh, Matt Forbes, sorry about the refill, but we were not going to interrupt that soliloquy. No. Scott Todd, that was amazing. No. Scott, thank you. Parting words, Scott Blossman, what do you got? What's that? Parting words, what do you got? Parting words, keep moving your feet. Move your feet, day. Move your feet day every day. Is that the toast? Cheers. That's the cheers. Move your feet day every day. Move cheers. your feet day every day. Cheers. Get to dance to the outro. <laughs>